To start our clay projects, the materials we'll be using, we'll have a plate, metal plate with your name and your teacher's initial circled. You'll have a little placemat on top of that. You'll have your clay and you'll have some slip. Slip is just watered down clay that acts like glue. We'll talk about that in a minute. And you will also have a box of some texture tools at your table that you can use. You won't use these right away, but you will use them. Okay, so when you're working with your clay, it's important that you don't put it on this plate. You keep it on this placemat because if you put it on this plate, it will get stuck to it. This helps it from getting stuck. You can also work on your table because you have tablecloths out. Clay comes from the earth, so it's basically like mud and water. It's not modeling clay or Play-Doh. As you play with it, it will dry out. The water will come out into your hands. See that? So if you're not sure what you're doing at any point, just stop and don't squeeze the clay like it's a fidget because you'll be drying out your clay if you do that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do to make your Chia Pet, remember this is the store-bought one, is consider how you're going to make it hollow. Do you see how that one is empty? It's closed on the bottom, they have a few spots there, so that there's a place to pour the water into it. There's a couple ways that we can do this. So I'm gonna think about the body of my animal right now. I'm gonna reserve a piece of smaller chunk of clay for later, like for a head or arms, and I'll give you more if you need it. And I'm gonna take this chunk and I'm gonna roll it into a ball to make the body. So let's say I am going to make an elephant, okay? So there's two ways you can do it. The first way is you have a ball and you can make a pinch pot. You did this when you were younger. You take your thumb and you put it into the ball of clay. So you have a piece of the tablecloth in there. You put it into the ball of clay like this, okay? And you pinch with your fingers and your thumb. You pinch and turn, pinch and turn, pinch and turn. If you made a storytelling doll in third grade, this is the same method, pinch and turn, pinch and turn, pinch and turn. Okay, so that could be your body. Now that's kind of a big hole for the top when you think about growing uh, or just putting water in it. So you could kind of close it up a little bit if you want to do it that way. I'm just kind of squeezing it in. That's one idea. This could also be, let's say, if you had a creature where it was sitting this way, like this is its mouth or something, that could work too. Another way would be putting it upside down and building out from it. Okay, so there's some different possibilities, but you notice that there is an empty space here and the air can get out. It's not a bubble trapped in there. If a bubble gets trapped and I closed this up, when it dries and it goes into the kiln, it will, that bubble will get bigger and bigger and bigger and then poof, your clay will explode because the bubble will want to get out of there because when things get hotter, they get bigger. Okay, so that's one way we can make a body. Let me just show you another quick example. So let's say I, um, I'll set this aside and just trying to think of different ways that you might use. Okay, so another example is that you create your body. And I haven't put any arms or legs on it yet. And you take one of these types of tools to carve out the, the hollow space that we're talking about. So I could take one of these tools and carve out from the top some space. Okay, and that way I could keep it kind of a small little hole. Those, both of those ways could work. Now you can change this depending on the shape of your animal, whatever you're gonna do, or your thing. It doesn't have to be an animal. If it's a car or if it's a plant or something, you just have to be thinking about how it's going to have a hole in it for the water. And then you also have to be thinking how to make sure that it doesn't have a big bubble stuck in there. 
If I were to just have a big, huge, solid chunk of clay, that's also kind of dangerous because it, it's likely to explode. So we always like to hollow out clay a little bit. Okay, so let's see. I said I was going to make an elephant. So I wanna make some of the body parts. You might remember if you made a storytelling doll when you were in third grade, that any legs or arms, they kind of have to be attached to the body. They can't be sticking straight out or they would likely break off. It gets really fragile. So an elephant has big thick legs, so that probably won't be as big a problem. So I'm gonna make my legs like this. Now not everybody needs to make an elephant because I am. So I'm rolling them and tapping them. Do you see how fat those legs are? Okay, make two more. Tap it. I'm just kind of tapping it so it will stand straight. Legs get tricky because you want all of them to be the same length. Okay, so let's just test this out. If I put those four legs together, does it fit on there? Pretty good. Okay, so you may remember there's ways to attach. I can't just smush this on there. I have to do two things. The first thing I need to do is score. Score is scratching the clay to make it rough. So I need to score the two parts that I want to attach. I kind of want to make it look rough. It's going to look ugly, but nobody's going to see it. So this is the top of the leg where it attaches to the body. So I'm taking a toothpick because it's nice and pokey. And you'll find these in your texture boxes, your toolboxes. And then I'm going to scratch where I'm attaching it here. Scratch, scratch, scratch. And then I need to use slip. Slip is watered down clay that acts like glue. It's just right here. It's the same as the clay. You can use your finger to attach it, or you could use another tool that's in there. It doesn't really matter. And by the way, I've just made this from old clay. If you see dried up clay chunks at your table, you can drop them in there and they will turn into slip. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of this watery clay right here, okay? Doesn't need tons. And then I'm going to attach that leg. See, it's nice and attached now. And I will smooth it all the way around with my fingers so that it looks like it was always there. Okay, so I'm going to do that for all four legs. Every part I want to attach, I score, score, score. I slip. Attach, smear it down. Okay, I'll go really fast here so we can keep going. I'm gonna show you another way to make legs or arms or ears. Score, 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 score. You'll get really good at this. But it's really important to not forget it because your arms and legs or whatever it is that's sticking out will fall off. Okay, so I've got four legs. I'm smoothing them down. You don't need to go as fast as me. Okay, let's make sure my elephant's body can stand here. So I might need to tap it into place. So I've got the body part going. Next, I would probably a attach a head by scoring and slipping. Okay, so another way that you could make arms or legs or anything that's kind of sticking out, another method with clay, is you can pinch things out. So you can pinch and pull. Let's say I was making a lizard and I wanted to pull out a tail and pull out a head. I just gotta make sure I don't close that, that hole that I made. See that? I can pull things as long as they don't get too fragile and breakable. I wouldn't go much skinnier than that. If I really felt like I needed a skinnier tail than that, I could kind of wrap it back here, have my animal's tail kind of be like that for support. I'd probably even score and slip that part in there. I could do other detail work like pinch, 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 Okay, and if, if I were gonna have little tiny legs on here that would be fragile, 
let's say I need my legs to be really skinny for some animals or some things, like if it's a flower stem, if that's sticking out from there, that's going to break off. I guarantee that would break off. So I definitely want to keep it close to the body. I want it kind of almost attached to the body. I don't even want it like that. I want it like that. So I would still do the same thing. I would score, score, and slip. Okay, and attach. Okay, we won't finish these today. Hopefully, we'll finish them next time. And you, so you probably will run out of time today, which is fine. Another thing I just want to show you quick is you have all these texture tools that you can use. Some of them are rubber stamps. See how it made bumps? There are beads. You could pull in. There are little game pieces that kind of make cool textures that you might want to think about. Okay? And the last thing you want to think about um, probably next time you'll be doing it, is making the rough lines where you want your chia seeds to grow. See how I have these rough lines? Well, I didn't do it, but where the rough lines are on his beard, because that's where the chia seeds grew out of. So the rough lines on here is where I would plant my seeds in the spring when we put them in our windows to grow. Of course, this guy isn't done. I just wanted to show you that. Okay? The very last thing I will show you if it doesn't happen today, that's okay, but if it happens next time, that would be wonderful. If you're able to write your own name on the bottom in your best handwriting and your teacher's initial, that would be great. If you can't, I will help you do it. You just have to let me know, okay? We will put them back on here. We will slide them into a plastic baggie. I don't have a baggie with me, and we'll bring them over to the drying cart. We'll put them over on the cart with your teacher's name on it. All right, so that's all you need to know for today.